Hello and today we'll be checking out our new plugin that's the vehicle pathfinder plugin and uh, today we'll be seeing how to set up the pathfinder which is data based and which can be used by your uh, web store customers to find the products at the catalog pages or globally as required. So I'll be taking you the workflow through the workflow of this particular plugin at the storefront and then we'll be seeing how the uh, admin can create the different uh, types of uh, part finders from the admin backend panel using this particular plugins option. So here you can see that I'm already on the storefront and I'm on one of the uh, catalog pages for the wheels category. And here we have uh, a number of uh, products and if I want to uh, uh, funnel down my search, I can make use of the tire finder here. So I want to find a tire. So I have these drop downs here that can be used to search the tires. So for example, if I choose my brand as Mercedes, choose the uh, model number, choose the load index for that, choose a rim uh, diameter size and tap the search tire finder, then I'll be able to lower down and funnel out the respective result there. And uh, the customers can then add that particular result into the cart and can uh, very easily make a checkout. So before proceeding further and showing you the rest of the workflow of this particular plugin, please do subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to receive the latest updates from our end. Apart from that, if you find this particular video helpful, then kindly do give it a thumbs up. So this was how we can funnel down the results. I can also make changes. For example, I want, want it for the model A3 and index of 90 and a seven inch. I'll type again on the search and according to that, the result would be populated uh, there using the part finder as you can see for the wheels there. Now this is also applicable for the global uh, thing there. For example, if I go to the shop page, here you can see that I'm on the shop page right now and not on the uh, catalog page. So from the shop page as well, we can make use of the part finders. We have one uh, tire finder here. We also have a bicycle finder here. So if I choose the color and go to search uh, the bicycle, I'll be able to search the bicycle as you can see. The same goes uh, for the tire finder as well. So uh, if I choose the values and tap on the search, I'll be able to funnel down my search very easily. So that's how you can make use of the product attributes as well. Like here we have chosen the color and according to that, we are funneling down the search results. So here you can see that uh, with the yellow color and the C color we have the products there and uh, that's how basically you can easily funnel down the search results uh, by making use of the uh, what we say as the vehicle part finder so the part finders can be set up by the admin and then they can be set up on the different catalog pages uh, or the other pages as per your own requirement there. Now let me take you to the admin backend panel and let me show you how we can initially set up the part finder which is data based from the backend so that the users can search the products using the same and the storefront. So for that let me take you to the admin backend panel now. So uh, here I'm at the backend panel and I'll be logging into the admin backend panel by entering my username and password and tapping on the login button. Can you note that after the successful installation of the WooCommerce Vehicle Pathfinder plugin, you'll be able to find the path, uh, Pathfinder list here on the side panel. So let's tap on that. And that brings up the complete list of Pathfinders that you've created. So we already saw the tire finder uh, on the storefront and the other one that's the bicycle finder with the number of drop downs. So here you can see that the tire finder had four drop downs and uh, the bicycle had two. So here are the four drop downs. That's the grand model load index and the rim diameter. And for the bicycle, I had the color and the uh, test one as the drop down step. Now uh, to uh, create a new part finder or to add a new part finder, you just need to tap here on the add part finder button. Also can you know that you'll have to create your uh, products like your whatever you, uh, things you want to uh, allow the customers to filter out those products should be created first and then we can make use of those products within the part finder data so uh, the here we are on the part finder data section and uh, the very first option here is to enable the part finder we can set up the part finder name for example for now we'll set it as uh, demo finder and uh, 
here we can choose uh, on which category should be it uh, should it be applicable on so we'll choose it as vehicle and uh, for for now we'll just choose it as the vehicle one then we have here the option to add the drop downs as you can see so the drop downs uh, are used to create these values here that you can see for the uh, tire finder that we have created like the brand model load index so I'll just give you an example first and then I'll just edit one uh, part finder that I've just created. So here uh, I'll just tap on the new drop down. I'll set it as uh, demo drop down one or demo drop down one. We can make it as required or not. To add more drop downs, we can tap here on the add new button and that uh, adds more drop downs here. Demo drop down two let's make it as required now after uh, enabling the pathfinder setting up the pathfinder name uh, the categories or to which it should be applicable to to uh, creating the levels of drop downs as you can see and uh, can you know that the drop downs become dependent from top to bottom so uh, can you keep that in mind after making these changes here we'll just tap here on the save pathfinder the data would be saved and after that we can see that we can now add products here uh, on, uh, very easily to add the products uh, there uh, we need to tap here on the add product button that brings up this particular slide and here is the first drop down that we had created this is the second drop down we had created so for example uh, demo drop down option one and I'll add it uh, similarly we can add the same for the second drop down as well now after adding it up we'll have to select the product for the same uh, so for example if I choose the retro motor bike we can choose that up similarly for the other one as well we can add the values there uh, we can add multiple uh, drop down options here for example I can enter test 2 for example we can tap here on the add button and that would be added into this particular list there then after you'll have to tap on the save button similarly and that would basically save uh, the thing now if I go back to the part finder here you can see that uh, the particular retro motorbike has been added and it is applicable to the drop down items here so the demo drop down one that we had created we have uh, the demo drop down option one and the demo drop down option two so for those two drop downs we have the retro bike being assigned to them we can basically edit the uh, uh, product list once again by tapping on the edit button there now uh, let me take you back to the part finder list here you can see that uh, the demo part finder has been created and the number of drop downs within it is two and the status is enabled right now now let me edit the tire finder that we had already created with four drop downs so if I tap here on the edit button, we have uh, the part finder data. At the top, we have the part finder name, the tire finder. You can see the same name here being displayed. Uh, then we have the categories. We have edited it into two different categories. One is the vehicles and the wheels. We have created uh, four different drop downs. Uh, one is the brand, model, load index, and the rim diameter then we what we have done is we have added the products we can also manually add the products and uh, manually we can add the products and uh, here you can see that the add products automatically from the attributes which are mapped to the respective drop downs so uh, here you can see that the drop down the brand mercedes model is a3 load index is 80 the rim diameter is 6 inch so for each of the products according to uh, their attributes we have added the uh, drop downs to them so if i tap here on the add product button you can see that uh, here we have uh, created the drop down value as mercedes we have set the model as a283 the load index as 90 and 80 index the rim diameter as 6 and 7 inches so these are the uh, what we say as the attributes for the products and according to that we have then search that particular product in the select product section and we have chosen that product and after we have saved this particular thing here those uh, products have then been displayed here within the list itself and then when we go to the front end we can choose the product uh, the brand the model the index type the diameter type 
and then tapping the search type finder has displayed us the particular one having these uh, data values with the brand name the model the load index and the rim diameter so these attributes should be there within that particular uh, what we say as the product itself so that it gets displayed here on the uh, on the uh, on the only on the storefront basically so uh, yeah so that was much about the uh, WooCommerce vehicle part finder plugin and I hope it gave you an overview of uh, how we can set up the database uh, uh, or how we can create the database part finders from the back end how then that can be used by the customers at the storefront to uh, filter out the products according to their need so they need to choose the data first and according to the chosen data uh, the search results are funneled out for the customers there and then they can add those particular products into the cart and can then directly make a checkout as required so uh, thanks uh, for watching this particular video and i hope it helped you out in a bit of understanding there giving you an understanding if you still have any uh, questions queries or suggestions you can even check the user guide that i've attached within the description of this particular video and uh, you can anytime get back to us at support and the rate of webcool.com you can raise a ticket at webcool.us.com you can also contact us through https colon forward slash forward slash www.webcool.com forward slash contacts apart from that if you find this particular video helpful then do kindly give it a thumbs up and lastly thanks for watching this particular video and have a great day ahead